happened to us, a child was born, and his name was Jesus. He brought light. He brought peace. He brought joy.
Well, good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I am so glad to be able to worship God together with you one more time on this, the final Sunday of the 2021 calendar year. Praise God for a whole year's worth of worship and fellowship, for a whole year's worth of communion with God, a whole year's worth of enjoying the blessings of God, lamenting through some of the worries and cares of our heart, being able to join together with loved ones, family and friends across the country and right here locally to the Washington DC area. I praise God for it all and I thank God for you. I'm Larry Robertson, pastor of Word for Life Church Ministries, and I want to welcome each and every one of you to our church worship service. To all of our members and friends, our ministry partners, thank you for your continued commitment, your dedication, your prayers, your ongoing support. I can't express to you how much you have meant to the life of Word for Life Church Ministries. We are blessed because you have been you. You've been generous. You've been gracious. You've been merciful to us even. You have been faithful. You've tuned in week after week. You've been invitational, encouraging others to welcome or to join with us in the worship service. And you've been right here with us every step of the way. Praise God for you. And thank you for your faithfulness to our ministry. To all of you who are visiting with us for the very first time today, I want to welcome you to our worship experience. Welcome you to our church family. Uh, you may already experience the love that we have for one another and the love that we have for God. And I want to encourage and invite you to join in with us as we worship together. Go ahead. If you haven't done so already, drop a comment into the comment section of the chat box. Whatever platform you're watching us on, we want to know that you're with us so that we can share our personal greetings with you and invite you and welcome you into our worship space uh, as it is virtually. Whether you're on Zoom, Facebook, or YouTube, uh, there are others who are watching and witnessing this worship alongside of you, and I would love it if we could wave across the virtual aisle, say hello to those whose names we see come up, give a shout out, and you can also invite somebody else to join you. If you're on Zoom, of course, you have the, the uh, passcode, you have the meeting ID, share that information with someone who can join with you on Zoom. If you're on Facebook, go ahead and press that like button and then share it with your uh, Facebook friends in a general sense, but then you can also invite individuals in a very specific, particular sense. Go ahead and just start typing their name into the comments section, and maybe you'll see their names come up on a list, and you can just select them. They'll know that you're in worship with us, and you can invite them to our worship service. If you're on YouTube, of course, you have the link, and I want to encourage you to share that with your friends as well. It's easy to do. Go ahead and either just copy it and paste it out of that address bar, or use the uh, share button Looks like a little arrow that's curved, and then you'll have a list of options of how you might be able to share this experience on YouTube as well. However you come to be with us today, I thank you for joining with us. You've had many other options and opportunities uh, to worship real time at 11 a.m., and I praise God that you have chosen to be with us here at Word for Life Church. I want to send a special shout out all the way down to uh, the state of Georgia, to our friends, uh, the family of our own Deacon Juliet Murphy. They are even now in a season of bereavement, having lost their beloved father after a wonderful, long life, well-lived. And I praise God for each and every one of you. So to the family of Deacon Juliet Murphy, do know that we are praying with you. We're praying for you. And we bless God for the life of your father. How blessed you are. Amen. Amen. As we are continuing in worship by way of engaging in fellowship, I also want to encourage everyone who's with us to worship with us in the singing of songs, in the reading of scripture, in the prayers that will be lifted up, and also in the sermon as we engage the word of God together. We also encourage you to worship with us in our giving. There are four ways to do that. You can send a check or money order made out to Word for Life Church Ministries. The address on the bottom of your screen is 11519 Fort Washington Road, Fort Washington, Maryland, 20744. You can also uh, contribute to, uh, by way of our church website. That's wordforlifechurch.org. When you're there, go to the online giving tab and you'll see how to complete the giving process by way of online giving. If you want to text your gift, you can take out your cell phone and open up your texting app. 
The number you'll need and the message are both on the bottom of your screen. I'll just recite it for you. The number is 73256. The message is give the number two WFLCM. That's all one word. Give to WFLCM. Space, then the dollar sign and amount, and then hit send. On that message, you'll receive an instant reply that will help you complete the giving process by way of text to give. Then, of course, we have our Realm app. It's called Connect on Your Phones. Open that up, go to the giving section, designate your amount and the cause for the gift that you are giving today, whether it be tithes or offering, a special gift, our building fund, vision fund, uh, mission work, uh, church anniversary even. Praise God for how you're giving. Praise God for the cause and the, the purposes for your giving. Praise God not only for those, but the amounts, the dates, and the means by which you give. We give you thanks for it all. Your generosity has helped us to make this a successful ministry year. And again, I want to say to you, thank you. And I pray that God will continue to pour out God's richest blessings on each and every one who has trusted God with their financial gifts. Our generosity has paved the way for much good to be done right here in Fort Washington, Maryland, across this country and overseas. We've had a great report just a couple of weeks ago in our church meeting, and the news just keeps coming because ministry never stops. And we thank God that you continue to find uh, Word for Life Church, a worthy, faithful partner through which you might contribute financially. And then, of course, because this is a, uh, a worship opportunity and our chance to demonstrate to God how much we love God and appreciate how much God has given to us. We also want to make sure that, you know, of course, there are tax implications for this and you can benefit by uh, sharing your tax deductible gifts with our church family, our ministry, and we are, are so glad to send you any documentation you need at the turn of the year to help you complete your, uh, your tax obligations um, as well. So we wanna make sure that we make that available to you and let you know that, um, again, we're grateful for all that you've done, for how you've partnered with us, and then to encourage you to continue to worship God in this particular way. All right, so, I pray that you had a wonderful Christmas day with your family and friends, your loved ones. If you traveled, I pray that you did so safely, that you exercised good caution and that you were diligent and quite vigilant with your safety uh, measures and that you continue to stay masked up and observe distances whenever necessary and appropriate. And of course, as many of you as can and are able that you've been vaccinated and boosted that you will be able to at least have some measure of protection by which you can mitigate the effects of uh, COVID-19 and all of its variants. My prayer is that we be found in good health and sound mind and body and certainly in spirit. I pray that God will keep us in that way so that we can continue to worship God for how God has been, for who God is and what we're believing in God for. Thank you for being with us today. I'm sure that you're already engaged across the virtual aisles. Let's keep that going as we go through the worship experience today. And then we'll receive our prayer from Deacon Murphy. Minister Angela Jones and the band will come back and share with us in song. And then I'll share with you uh, the word of God for the day. Again, thank you for being with us. We praise God for you. And I'll see you again in the next couple of minutes. I invite you to pray along with me. Father, we come giving you thanks, giving you praise. We worship you. We praise you for you are God, you God all by yourself. For you have established your kingdom in the heaven of heavens. And Lord, you truly rule over all your creation. So we invite your presence, Lord, into our dwelling places and especially into this worship service, every phase of this worship service. You are invited to come in and to be with us, to strengthen us, to carry us on your mighty wings, Lord, through the, through the trials and through the storms of this life's journey. We thank you for your presence is always with us, and you're with us even right now. We thank you for those, Lord, that you will move upon the hearts to give into your kingdom on this day. Bless them, Lord, as they have given and will give, Lord, planting a seed into your kingdom that will be multiplied uh, greatly, Lord, as they give it freely and not out of requirement, Lord, but they do it cheerfully. 
And then, Lord, we thank you for the messenger, our pastor, Pastor Laren Robertson, as you have planted a word into his heart. Bless him, Lord, for the word that will come out of his mouth will be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. For at the entrance of your light, of your word, there is light. And Lord, let that light come forth and shine upon us, Lord, as we're in this worship. And we give you thanks and praise, Lord, as you come in and as you're moving about in this worship service. We thank you and we're grateful to you. As we present this prayer to you, I do so in the name of Jesus and amen.
Lord in heaven, we thank you for this day. Grateful God for the privilege and the opportunity that is ours to worship you. That we are able to join together in communion with one another. We thank you, God. Thank you for the fellowship. Thank you for those who are gathered with us, even in the virtual space. We thank you, God, for those whom they have invited and encouraged to join with them. I'm grateful for this privilege that is now even mine to share, Lord, what you have already said in your word. To that end, God, we pray that you help us to hear, that we might know, sense, feel, we might believe, and then follow after you. In the name of Jesus, we pray, and we ask it all, amen. Amen. We praise God for another worship experience, another opportunity to join together as we lift high the name of our Christ in this world. I want to call your attention today to John chapter 1. John chapter 1, verse 14. We want to pick up kind of where we left off from last week. I don't know if this is part two, but just where we left off last week. John chapter 1, verse 14. This is how it reads. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. And from that verse, I want to lift up that beginning of the second clause as our, our theme, our thought for this message today. We beheld his glory. That's what we want to talk about today. We beheld his glory. And really that, that holds it all together, does it not? We beheld his glory. With that statement, John argues that Jesus was not a fanciful figment of someone's imagination, nor was he a fleeting hope of some bygone era. No, John said, we beheld his glory. This one declarative statement joins together the person and prerogative of the divine with the condition and the cares of this world. And I suggest that it marks for us one of God's richest blessings to behold his glory. When the Spirit enlists John to testify in this way, I believe that this is a testimony captured in John's prologue. John set the stage for all that will come the duration of his book that will help people to appreciate that God came to this earth born as a baby in human form, grew and become, became a man that we know as Jesus the Christ who gave his life for the cause of salvation for creation. And those who will follow him shall not only have a good life, and in fact, what's more important, will have everlasting life. John testifies in this way, in order that humanity can begin to appreciate the depth, the height, the width, and yes, even the duration of God's love. When it is his turn to testify, when he is called to the stand, when John is called to give testimony, John says, we beheld his glory. This is important at this time that John write in this way to those who will receive his word in the first place because they would have had to counter uh, the Gnostic view that this Jesus, this Messiah was really just a spiritual being who emanated as an essence of God, who never walked the earth, who never lived a human form, who never uh, occupied a human body. This is just a spiritual being, this Jesus. John says, no, 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 no. You and your docetism, you who believe in that way, you need to know that we beheld his glory. We saw him. We walked with him. We talked with him. He talked with us. We leaned on him and he leaned on us. We ate with him. We saw what he did. We felt his, his, uh, his pierced body. We beheld his glory. 
we, we know we know that Jesus is real. That's what John is aiming at here. John wants to testify to this truth. Jesus is real. Type that in there and testify if you believe like John. If you can testify like John, we beheld his glory. Jesus is real. That's where John is getting to. And all throughout John's gospel, he will make the case one example after another. One miracle, one saying, one experience, one moment, one thing after another. Point by point, case by case. John wants people to know Jesus is real. But what does this mean? What does it mean for John to testify in this way? What does it mean for John to say we beheld his glory? I want to suggest to you at least three different uh, uh, meanings that arise from the movement of this one verse. In the first case, what it means is that God's design is to engage with human affairs. Don't read too fast by, by the first part of this verse. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. The two parts, that one clause, the one phrase, it, is, it makes all the difference in the world. If, if John is going to say that we beheld his glory, we need to know, first of all, how we got here. And in knowing how we got here, we need to know what was his purpose for coming. And we have it in these two clauses. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. And these two together help us to appreciate what is God's design to engage human affairs. What then is God's design to engage human affairs? How does God engage in human affairs? First, the word became flesh to the Greek speaking world into which John would have been testifying in the first place. For John to use this very base term, flesh, flies against uh, their thinking of that day, that the body in and of itself was tainted and was without regard and should not be elevated to any form because the body would soon be counted as irrelevant and done away with. They were very much concerned about one's spirit. And there's nothing wrong with that except for the fact that they disregarded, and then because they disregarded, they also disrespected the human body. What's the problem with that? Well, the human body is also a part of God's creation. God did not just breathe and, and, and nothing became human flesh or took on the form of humanity or became a living soul. No, God breathed into a human body and that human body became a living soul. The one who formed, fashioned, and created the human body takes on human flesh and it demonstrates to us that God has some regard for human form. God has regard for human form. Maybe for some, that's why we need to know we ought to not disregard or disrespect the human body. Disregarding and disrespecting the human body leads to things like chattel slavery. Disregarding and, and dis, uh, avowing the human body leads to things like physical sexual abuse. Disregarding and, disre and disrespecting the human body leads to things like, like poor self-imagery and the inability to identify oneself as God has identified you and, and trusting that God knows what's best instead of all of the changing whims and of the world's ways and systems. God said, no, I designed this form and I'm planting my word in that form. You ought to regard and respect the human body because the word became flesh. God uses the base things of this world in order to engage with this world. Do you see it? God is engaging in human affairs by engaging through the base things of this world. And if we can tie this together and push it further and John says, he dwelt among us. He who took on human flesh lived among people of human form. He 
who took on human flesh did not decide to reside in the palace, did not hide behind the gates of some enclosed community. John says he dwelt among us. Who is this us? It's Andrew and Peter. It's Philip and James and John. It's John the beloved. It's Matthew the tax collector. It's Judas the, the traitor. Judas is scary. It's the other Judas who was hanging around. It's, it's the other James. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's those who are common and those whose names would not have appeared on the, on the high society list of the New Jerusalem times. John says he dwelt among us. There's nothing about us that that Jesus uh, had to regard and would have necessarily made Jesus want to come be with us. There's nothing about us that separated us from anybody else except for the fact that Jesus decided to choose us. In fact, so common were John and the rest that one of the ways <laughs> that, that the people knew them it's because they knew him. <laughs> you remember when, when they found Peter in the courtyard after Jesus had been arrested. One of the servant girls was passing by and looked at Peter and said, no, I've seen you before. You are one of the ones that was with him. I know you because I know him. And that's the way, friends, that Jesus comes to be with us. And that's the way we can be with Jesus. We have our regard and we have our intentionality in the way that Jesus has regard and intentionality for what is common among us. Now, this is another example of God taking the strong of this world in order to confound them with the weakness of the world. This is what it means for God to say those of you who are the most intellectual or the smartest in the group, I'm going to twist it up and make things right by those whom you have discounted as those who are, or who are inferior in knowledge. Jesus says, you, you think you think it's one way, but I'm coming in another way. I'm coming in flesh and I'm going to dwell on those that you would otherwise disregard. That's how God designs to engage in human affairs. What does that mean for you and me? It means that we dare not diminish, disregard, or disrespect ourselves, our bodies, or the bodies of those that we come in contact with because these are the same kind of bodies that house the Word of God who became flesh. It means that we dare not diminish, disregard, or disrespect the people of God among whom God designs and desires to keep company. It means that if we ourselves are counted out or counted as less than or ill-conceived to bear anything that looks like the image of God, these are the very ones. You are the very ones through whom God designed to work and engage in the world by way of human affairs. This is God's design. God does it by sending the word in flesh to dwell among us. But keep on. Keep on listening to John's testimony and you'll see that this is not only God's design to engage in human affairs, but this is also God's design to elevate the human condition. Did you hear John? <laughs> we beheld his glory. It's the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. This is God designed to elevate the human condition. By using the word glory here, John uses the Greek term doxa, and doxa is intended to give the idea or impression of one's opinion or one's estimate of something or someone. It's the way that one might esteem someone else. Glory. We, we, we beheld, John says, his glory. We beheld, in other words, we took stock of who he was and we assigned to him a certain measure, a certain degree of esteem. And we beheld his glory. But then John says something else here that is just completely mind blowing. This glory, he says, the glory that they saw in him. 
the opinion that they had of him, the way that they esteemed him, could only be offered to one who was begotten of the Father. That John says, his glory is as the only begotten of the Father. In other words, we never seen anybody like him. There's nobody like him. Nobody talked like him. Nobody walked like him. No one could heal like him. Nobody was wise like him. Nobody was sinless like him. No one was perfect like him. And he came to be with us. God here is elevating the human condition. Uh, friends, we don't have to depend on people who are less than perfect to give us our eternal satisfaction. We got him. You know, we don't have to trust in our own frailties, our own fickleness, and our own finality. No, we've got him. It, we, we, we beheld his glory. And it's the only, as a, as the only begotten of the Father. Je, je, Jesus, rather, God, God could have chosen Joseph to do it another way. God could have used the child born out of the, conce the, the conceived child, out of the intercourse between Joseph and Mary. But instead, God said, no, I got it this time. I got it. I got it. This is, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. No, I got it this time. Jesus said, no, let, let's get let's get Elijah and, and let's get Moses together on the Mount of Transfiguration. And Peter, James, and John, while you are gathered around, I want you to go back and tell people what you have seen. Tell them that you heard a voice crack the sky and said, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. This is the glory of the only begotten of the Father. He is unique. I'm trying to tell you, there's nobody like like him, and because he came, that he came to lift our state. How does he do it? How does Jesus lift our state? And how does John ultimately arrive at the point where he can say the glory that belongs to him is a glory like something we've never seen? I want to suggest to you today, unless I get too far ahead of myself, that John is writing this text after the events of Calvary. And John is writing this text after the resurrection of the Christ. And John is writing this text having been touched by the Spirit of God who helps John to put the pieces together to see that what Jesus has been up to all along is to elevate the state of humanity. Jesus says to those who are on the boat, Peter and, and James and John, y'all, come on, follow me. Jesus says to Matthew, the tax collector, man, put that stuff down, fix your life, come and follow me. Jesus says to the one who will ultimately betray him, man, look, there's something about you that even you are a part of God's plan. Come follow me. Jesus looks at that Samaritan woman by the well and says, look, it doesn't matter what your ethnicity, your background is, your personal relationships failed, though they may have been your oppressed state or condition, you got something to you and I can use you in service. Come Oh, you can follow me too. And who am I talking to today? Where you've been counted out, you've been counted as less than, you've been disregarded, you've been passed over, you've been passed by. Jesus has come to elevate the human condition. We do not have to succumb to being under the weight. We do not have to be to, to get in to those who would pour out the gasoline of the light that God is inflaming within our heart. No, Jesus has come that we might have a light and we might have it more abundantly. He's come to elevate the human condition. We beheld his glory. It's the only glory, the glory rather, of the only begotten of the Father. He elevates the human condition. But then John says, he's full of grace and truth. Herein we see God's design is to enrich the human heart. Well, I hope you can see that here. Uh, it, John says, look, look, look. He's full of grace and he's full of truth. John is looking back a few years in the mirror of time. John is saying that the ministry of Jesus is all grace and all truth. 
that Jesus has not come just to bring grace, but that Jesus is grace. Jesus didn't just come to tell the truth, but Jesus is the truth. The ministry of Jesus is both redeeming grace and revelatory truth. The grace of God, that is that which redeems humanity from humanity's sin and the revelatory truth that points humanity to the divine. Jesus is grace and truth. He is not uh, propositionally e either or. No, he is both and. And this is important to note because grace by itself has the potential to drift into some superficial spirituality and sentimentality. It's only a surface level thing that really we kind of pass from one to, one to another without even thinking about it. And some can cheapen grace by continually doing the things that we need grace to uh, help us with in the first place. He's not just grace. He's not just truth because truth by itself has the potential to drift into dogmatic dismissal. Jesus is not of the Pharisaical tribe. Oh no. Jesus is not, uh, Jesus is willing rather to eat and show people how to eat on the Sabbath day. Jesus is willing to show people how to liberate themselves from oppressive debt even if it means you got to work to free your tool, your ox, on the Sabbath day. Jesus is not just truth. Jesus is grace and truth. And part of the issue is that we run into folks all the time who are way too heavy on grace or truth and don't know how to be both and. Thank God for Jesus. He is full of grace and truth. And because he is, he enriches the human heart. What does it mean to be full of grace and full of truth? It means that to the, to the parent who appreciates that their children have some condition for which there seems to be no cure, Jesus has enough grace to make that cure a reality and enough truth to Tell his disciples, you can do this too if you learn how to fast and pray. He's grace and truth. What does it mean? Jesus uh, tells Nicodemus at night, look, Nicodemus, I know you want to uh, experience a new kind of life, but here's the truth of the matter. You must be born again. And instead of leaving Nicodemus at that, Jesus says, for in order to be uh, made completely new, you got to trust that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He's full of grace and he's full of truth. He, uh, Jesus responds to Mary and Martha who are weeping because their brother Lazarus has died. Jesus wants them to know and John, by way of sharing the testimony with us, helps us to appreciate that this same Jesus weeps himself. He's full of grace and that he can come alongside of those who are in need and he's full of truth in order to demonstrate that he is the resurrection and that he is the life and if that anyone would come through him, they might have life and have it more abundantly. He's full of grace and he's full of truth. He enriches the human heart. We live in a time within a time when we need enrichment of our heart, we need uh, uh, enrichment of our soul, even of our culture. When alternative facts can be run on a 24-7 news cycle, we need full grace. We need full truth. When word of uh, coronavirus is running rampant 
and all its variants throughout this land and all around the world, we need grace and we need truth. Well, when, when, when certain segments of our population want to, desire to, have to, and make up their minds to believe a lie instead of believing in the truth, we need grace and we need truth. What then is the answer to all of this? I came here today to tell you that testify just like John, there is an answer. We beheld his glory. Yes, Lord, we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father. He's full of grace and he's full of truth. And friends, today, if you learn how to trust in Jesus for your own salvation, you can testify like John. You can testify like I have. We beheld his glory. Who am I talking to today when you know that your life's condition was slipping and you were all the way down and he lifted you up? Can you testify even in this virtual way that we beheld his glory? Who are you today where you can testify that if it had not been for the Lord on your side, you don't know where you would be. He came part grace and part truth. And in equal measure lifted you up and saved your life. We beheld his glory. Who are you today where you can testify that I was lost and I was sinking in a world of sin, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry and from the waters he lifted me and now save am I. We beheld his glory. I believe we can all testify to this news today. We were once lost in our sins, but Jesus came and he took us in. He died on Calvary. He died and he gave his life. He died and we beheld his glory and he suffered right there the cross and when he did I knew that we could take it because he did I knew that we could make it because he did he bled and then he died right there on Calvary he died and we beheld his glory and they took him down and buried him in the grave but on the third day on the third day he got up from the grave with all his hand. But don't stop there with the story. The story is that he's coming back again. And on that day, I want to see him look upon his face there to sing forever of the saving grace on the streets of glory. Let me lift my voice. Can I pass home at last ever to rejoice? Do I have a witness? Do I have a witness in worship? Oh, I want to see him. Oh, I want to see him. Go ahead and type that in wherever you're worshiping today. I want to see him live into that hope, live into that expectation. I want to see him. And I've got good news. If you trust in him and never doubt, he will show up and he'll bring you out. And you can testify like John. In that day, we shall behold him. We shall behold him. We shall behold him face to face. Do I have any excited folk in worship? Are you excited to behold him? To look on his face there to sing of his saving grace? Are you excited today that though you might be weary, though you might be worn, there come a day when he shall show up and you shall see him just like he is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. We shall behold him. We shall behold him. We shall see him. We'll see him face to face. And in that great day, we'll shout hallelujah. We'll sing our troubles over. And we'll say glory. Glory to the Lamb. The only begotten of the Father. Amen. 
Amen. We praise God for the word of God today. And I want to make sure that in response to what we have just heard, that we extend an invitation. First of all, to those of you who are unsaved, I invite you to Christian discipleship. And what that means is in the first place, you believe that Jesus is the son of God. He's the savior of the world. That God gave Jesus and he gave his life. That he died on Calvary. He was buried in the grave. And on the third day, God raised him from the grave. If you believe that, the record is that you are saved already. And now it's time for you to make that declaration known that you are now really willing and ready to say yes. And you can do that in any one of our three platforms today. Just type in the comment, I am ready. With those three words, I will see that. And right away, I'll be in touch with you to help you navigate the next step along the path of your spiritual journey. Just type it in. I am ready. If you're unsaved, this is the day. This is the time. There is no time like today because we, we don't know if we'll have another time like today. And so I, I implore you, I encourage and I invite you to say yes. Receive the gift of God's grace in the person of Jesus Christ. Be saved today. Not only does God love you, but God has made it possible for you to live in the light of his glory. Be saved today. Receive this invitation. Take me up on it. Say, yes, I am ready. And then we also want to extend an invitation to those of you who are already saved. You're already saved, but are not a member of another church. You don't have a church family right now. You've perhaps walked away from the church a little while ago and just had not returned. Or maybe you just, you know, you're loosely affiliated with some church somewhere else. And I want to welcome you into fellowship with Word for Life Church Ministries. Here we, we aim to practice and exercise the love of God as we disciple and do life with one another. And I want to encourage you to join with us here as we seek to be in the will of God, walking in the way of the Christ, and seeking to make a difference in the world. And if that's you today, I invite you also Take me up on this invitation to Christian Fellowship. Say, I am ready. Type it in, Zoom, Facebook, or YouTube. Go ahead and type that in, whatever platform you're watching this on. We'll see that, and right away, I'll be in touch with you. And together, we will discern what the next step is on the path of your spiritual journey. So the invitation is to, first of all, Christian discipleship, and then secondly, to Christian Fellowship. And no matter which side of that invitation you fall on, the doors of the church are always open. Now is the time. And this is the right time for you to make a response. Say yes to Jesus. He'll change your life as he has changed the whole world. It'll be the greatest decision you've ever made. And we'll be rejoicing right along with all of heaven if you in this very moment can say yes. Perhaps you're not ready to say yes right now or maybe you just don't want to do it in a public forum or public setting. We have two other ways for you to take us up on this invitation. First, go to our church website. Wordflifechurch.org. When you get there, look for the new members form and you'll see a set of information that we're looking to receive. Fill in that information, hit submit, and our new member coordinator will be in touch with you right away. You can also email us. You can email us at new members at wordflifechurch.org. If you're going to email, make sure we have your name and contact information so we can be in touch with you as soon as we possibly can. So we have those three methods. Real time in worship. Type it in, I am ready. Or go to our website, workflifechurch.org. Look for the new members form or even email us to new members at workflifechurch.org. However, you're going to come to be with us today, however, you may respond to these invitations that we have extended. We bless God for you. And I pray that you will say yes and that you will do it today. Word for Life Church, of course, want to make sure. That this invitation lives beyond this experience of worship, that we all will be invitational. Go ahead and reach out to that loved one, that friend, that neighbor, acquaintance, the business associate, uh, that long lost friend or cousin from a long time ago. Check in with them and let them know how much God loves them and let them know how much we are standing ready to receive them as a part of our church family. Won't you do that? And we praise, we praise God for how we will uh, continue to make disciples as we determine to be better disciples. Amen. Amen. We've had a wonderful time in worship today, and I praise God for the completion of another set of Sundays, 52 up, 52 down, by the grace of God. We bless God. 
wherever you are, I encourage you, even now, if you haven't been doing it already, I encourage you to go ahead and lift your hands, shout aloud, let the joy of your heart and your soul be known. God is a good God. God is a good God. In fact, go ahead and type that in to whatever platform you're watching it on. God is good. Go ahead and type that in. God is good. Let that be your testimony and your witness going forward from this moment of worship and this experience of worship to guide you in the days to come leading up to the new year. We praise God for who God is and how God continues to show up, show up in our lives. Before we are... are Pray and end our worship experience today. I want to encourage, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and type in to the various platforms any birth dates or anniversaries that we uh, should be celebrating throughout this week. Go ahead and type those in. All of our December babies, we pray that you had a wonderful month, that your birth date has been a blessed experience, and that you've been able to praise God and give God thanks for another year of life. Now, it's been a really long time since I've said it, but you know, it still is true, so I figure I'll go ahead and say it now. We are on the precipice, church, friends, family. We're, we're on the precipice we're, of the greatest month of the entire year. I know, I know you might you might be partial to some other months, but January, what a great month. January, the greatest month. Of, everybody's looking forward to January. Amen? It's the greatest month of the year, I keep trying to tell you, and we're looking forward to to January and celebrating all of our January babies, of course, yes, including me. It's the greatest month of the year, and before, of course, before we get there, we have to take care of last week of December, so make sure all of you last week in December, babies, we are able to celebrate with you. Make sure that we know that your birthday, your anniversary is coming up, and we praise God for you as well. Amen. I, I know, I know, I've got some haters who think that there's some other month but the reality is, I, I tell our church this, you know, whenever I make that declaration, you know, there's there's really an 11-way place, 11-way tie, rather, for second place. Uh, 11-way tie for second place. So if you're not born in January, it's okay. You got second place. You know, we praise God for it. And, uh, you know, God loves us all just the same. Just not all of us were able to be born in January. Amen? All right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. Um, we're, we're on our way. And we're going to lift up a word of prayer and give God thanks for another year. And then we will uh, bid you good day. Pray with me if you will. Lord God in heaven, how we love you, how we thank you. We worship you, God. We thank you, Lord, for calling us unto yourself day after day, week after week, month after month. You continue to call us unto you. And then, Lord, by grace, you've helped us, Lord, to be able to hear your call and to respond in a positive way. We thank you, God, that throughout the course of this year, though it has been turbulent for some, we have continued to hear testimony of how you've brought others over. Though, God, this has been a year of uncertainty and ongoing uh, confusion around the medical world and scientific advances, even the stock market is up and up and then crashes. Uh, schools have been open and then closed and then virtual and otherwise. Jobs have been sparse for some, but plentiful and opportunity for others. Lord, there's been so much going on in this world. Relationships have been mended in some ways and other ways they've been further stretched. We thank you, God, because you have been the same through it all. You are our source. You are our foundation. You are the one who continues to breathe afresh into us. You are the one who continues to clear the path. You are the one who continues to call us along the path. Perhaps that is not so clear, but you keep us just the same. We thank you, God. You are the God of all creation. And we give you thanks for who you are, for all that you have done. We honor you. You are God all by yourself. And so, Lord, we come to you on this the last Sunday of the year, 2021, to say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for all of the ups and the downs. We thank you, God, for all of the answers and the questions. We thank you, God, for all of the ways that have been made and the doors that have been shut. 
We thank you, God, for the good health, and we thank you, Lord, even for those moments where we had to fight through. We thank you, God, for the times when our days were full of joy and sunshine just as much as we thank you for the days where our lives seem to be quite dismal and deep in despair. Through it all, in it all, because of it all, in spite of it all, you have been our all, and we say thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for leading us this way in our virtual setting. Lord, we're, we know some of us just don't like it. We wish we were in person and we desire to be in person again. And yet, God, you continue to meet us each and every time we gather. And we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to manage ourselves, our resources, our relationships, Lord, ourselves. We say thank you. Thank you, God, that we have been able to come out of this year better than we went into this year. Thank you. Thank you, God, for the work of Word for Life Church Ministries and all who have joined us in this way, for the families that we have blessed, for the lives that we have touched, for the relationships that have been built and developed along the way. Lord, we say thank you. There is much, Lord, that it remains at our hands to do. But that which you have helped us to accomplish by your grace, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, God. It really seems to be insufficient, but it's really all that we've got. We say thank you. You didn't have to smile on us, God, but you did. You didn't have to look favorably on us, Lord, but you did. You didn't have to make the way clear before us, Lord, but you did. And we say to you, thank you. Thank you, God. For caring for the matters of our heart. You lifted burdens, Lord, on our soul and helped us to be made right and light. And we say thank you. Lord, there's so much to be grateful for. If we had 10,000 tongues, Lord, we wouldn't be able to name it, let alone praise you with everyone. And Lord, we pray that you will receive our gratitude today. We say thank you. Through it all, Lord, for it all, in spite of it all, because of it all, you have been our all. Thank you, God. We go into this last week of the year, leaning and depending on you, as we always have. We ask God that you will continue to search us, that you will continue to know us, continue to shine the light of your Holy Spirit within us. Illuminating, Lord, even the corners that we want to keep hidden away, that we might be able, with your grace, to clear them out, to be made more like Christ each and every day. We say, Lord, that we are sorry, that we ask that you will forgive us for our sins. Our transgressions, oh God, have no place in relationship with you. And so, Lord, we pray that you will help us to overcome, even as you've already overcome the world. Lord, we trust that we can lean into the victory that you have won for us in Jesus Christ. To that end, Lord, again, our hearts are filled with gratitude just to say thank you because you saved our souls. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. God, thank you. Lord, we pray that those who are with us in this moment of prayer Lord, together we'll be able to continue to sing aloud, to rejoice about, to spread the good news of your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Give us, Lord, space, opportunity, time, and the words to say that we will be able to share the good news of Jesus. We will invite somebody, Lord, into the warm embrace of your love just as you have received and you've kept us let us now God go out run and do the same as a demonstration of how grateful we are for how you have been with us and from this worship experience Lord we declare we won't do it the same way as we did before we'll be willing and able ready to share with somebody else that we have in fact we have beheld his glory and because it's full of grace and truth Lord, we are wanting, desirous, ready, and willing even now to share the same. May it be, God, 
pleasing in your sight. We'll be able to add glory, honor, and dominion to that which is already yours. Now, God, as we are ready to go away from this worship service, I pray, God, that you will keep us to the end, knowing that we know we have been kept. Bless us, Lord. We know that we shall be blessed in your care for your cause. In the name of the Christ, we pray. Now unto him who is able to keep us, present us faultless for his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power now and forevermore. Let every believing heart together rejoice and say amen. Amen. God bless you. Happy New Year to you in advance. May God be with you.